and we're asked to use parametric equations of an ellipse to find the area enclosed by the ellipse. We have x equals two cosine theta and y equals three sine theta, where theta is on the closed interval from zero to two pi. So the graph of our ellipse would look like this on the coordinate plane. So to find the area using these parametric equations, we're gonna use the fact that we know that if a function of x or f of x is non-negative on the closed interval from, on the closed interval from a to b on the coordinate plane, then the area is equal to the def integral of f of x from a to b, or if we want we can substitute y for f of x, giving us this definite integral. So starting with this definite integral, we know that y is equal to three sine theta, and now we can find dx since we're given x equals two cosine theta. So differential x would be equal to negative two sine theta d theta. So now let's perform these two substitutions into our def integral. We would have the integral of three sine theta times negative two sine theta d theta. Now we have an integral in terms of theta but we still need to determine the limits of integration. So we might be thinking we should just integrate from zero to two pi, but that's actually not gonna work in this case. So what we're gonna do is consider the symmetry of the ellipse on the coordinate plane. Notice how if we found the area in the first quadrant here, we could then just multiply by four because of the symmetry. But we know on the coordinate plane, if we wanted to find this area, we would have to integrate from x equals zero to x equals two. So notice in this case, if we make a table of values for theta and x, when theta equals zero, notice how x would be equal to two cosine zero, which would be equal to two. And we don't want to start integrating at x equals two, we want to start integrating at x equals zero. But when theta is pi over two, notice how x would be two times cosine pi over two, or two times zero, which is zero. So in this case, we're actually gonna integrate from pi over two to zero, which would be the same as integrating from x equals zero to two. So our lower limit of integration is pi over two, and the upper limit of integration would be zero. This would give us this green shaded area, but since we went the whole area, we have to multiply this by four. So now let's find this area on the next slide. Since three times negative two equals negative six, let's go ahead and factor out the negative six. So we would have negative 24. And the integrand would now be sine squared theta. And now we'll use a power reducing formula for sine squared theta given here below in red. So let's go ahead and factor out the one half. That would give us negative 24 divided by two times integral from pi over two to zero of one minus cosine two theta d theta. Now we can go ahead and integrate. Here we would have negative 12. The antiderivative of one with respect to theta would just be theta. And then integrate cosine two theta. We'd have to perform substitution where u would be two theta and differential u would be two d theta, dividing both sides by two Notice how d theta would be equal to one half du. So we have an extra factor of one half when integrating cosine two theta. So the antiderivative would be minus one half sine two theta. So we would have negative 12 times, we first substitute zero for theta, that'd be zero minus one half sine zero, that's zero minus zero. And then when theta is pi over two, we would have pi over two, and then minus one half times sine pi. Well, sine pi is also zero. Notice how this simplifies to negative 12 times negative pi over two, which is equal to six pi. So six pi square units would be the area of the ellipse 
as we see here. Since we multiplied the diff integral by four, it would give us the entire area shaded here in green. I hope you found this explanation helpful.